Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, all really helps out. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, this story comes with multiple updates, and it was compiled by SS Toss Away, but the original post was from a throwaway account. And it was titled, I think I know what happened to my brother. I'm trying to write this in a way that no one will be able to research and find out who I am or my brother is, but it's the internet and everyone's a super sleuth. My brother went missing years ago. And when I say missing, I mean that his case was declared one of those creepy unsolved mysteries. It was on the news. I distinctly remember my parents interviewing for the news in our living room. I think I know what happened to him. I was very young when he went missing. I barely remember him, but I do remember that I loved him a lot. He would pull me around our block in a wagon. Most kids his age didn't do that. The days before he disappeared, I remember him staying home and babysitting me. I stayed in my room and played Nintendo 64. Throughout the day, a guy came over. I remember him. He was older, almost our dad's age. My brother made me go into my room whenever I heard the doorbell. Later, after the guy left, my brother would ask me not to say anything about the guy. With my brain only being focused on video games and extra dessert at that age, I agreed. I didn't care, nor did I comprehend the gravity of the situation. The day before he disappeared, I remember the older guy coming over. I was in the kitchen and remember looking up and seeing him kiss my brother. They hugged. They didn't care that I saw them. The older guy waved at me and I waved back, then I kept watching cartoons. I fell asleep on the couch and woke up to my brother whispering outside our front door. Don't worry, he's asleep, he said. The older guy said something I couldn't hear. Then my brother said something I couldn't make out, but I made out the words, visit them, or maybe he said, visit him. Either way, I know the word visit was in his sentence. The man raised his voice and said no. Then I heard plan and city, then I fell asleep again. The next morning, the day he disappeared, my parents were at work. My brother was acting very strange. I remember he kept checking the clock in the afternoon. I remember him picking me up and asking me if I wanted to go in the wagon. I was too hooked on Nintendo 64 and said no. He almost begged me and I said no again. Then he told me he had to run to our neighbor's house for something. I don't even remember what he said. I said okay. He reminded me not to open the door for anyone, only mum and dad. I shouted at him, okay, because Super Mario was getting on my fucking nerves and he wasn't helping. He gave me a hug and told me he loved me and left. He never came back. All these years, decades later, and I think he was in love with that man. I know he was. The memories randomly came flooding back to me earlier. I'm not quite sure why, but it has been taking over my thoughts lately. I can't sleep because I keep thinking about it. I think my brother left with that man and they ran away together. Or maybe something worse happened, but I don't think that's the case. My freshman year of college, I was part of a sports team that got national recognition. I remember my team's picture was on ESPN and with our university's name. A few days later, I got mail at my dorm. It was a gift basket. I thought it was from my parents, so I didn't read the card. I threw it away immediately and ate what was in it, but it was nothing but candy. Nerds, Jolly Ranchers, Tootsie Rolls, and Hershey's Kisses. I called my dad and thanked him for the gift basket, and he said he didn't send one. Neither did mum. Then I got thinking. All of those candies were what I used to eat as a kid. Literally all I ate for the earliest years of my life were those candies. I tried to find the card, but I couldn't. Then I began to think about how my brother would wheel me in the wagon to the gas station close to our house so I could get the candy after dinner even though it was a punishable by death no-no from mum. Months later, during Christmas, I got an unmarked Christmas card. The only thing written on it was a smiley. Since then, I've heard nothing. No one I know sent that card. I have never responded. I wonder every day if he's out there. I've never told anyone this. When the police asked me what happened that day, I told them he went to the neighbors because that's all I remembered honestly. It destroyed my parents. My mum became addicted to painkillers and my dad has had three extramarital affairs, which I know this tragedy is no way an excuse to cheat, but it sure didn't help. It has ruined our family and maybe my brother knows what he did. Maybe he regrets it and knows he can't come back home. 
but if I could see him today, I would just want to tell him that he is always welcome in my home. I love you so much, brother. We have so much catching up to do. Please come home, please. Now the first update comes two months later and it was titled, my parents kept my brother a secret from me. It's 4 p.m. and I'm drunk, lol. These past few weeks have been insane. I posted on here before. My brother went missing a long time ago. I thought he ran away from home. Long story short, I got into contact with some detectives that our family has known since my brother went missing. When I started asking questions, they told me that my brother was no longer on any missing persons registry. When I asked what that meant, they told me that he was removed per my parents' request. I asked my parents, my dad actually. My dad ignored me. My mum told me my brother is alive and okay, as far as she knows. They found my brother years ago, a very, very long time ago, and found out he was living with another man. He's gay and it disgusted my parents. He tried reaching out to them. They told him they didn't want anything to do with him and that I didn't remember him and wouldn't want to see him. I went ballistic. My parents weren't phased by it. They sincerely hate my brother for who he is, for being gay. They kept him a secret from me all my fucking life. My brother missed the birth of his nephew. He missed my wedding, graduations, everything, just because of my parents. They lied to me. I've been able to get a phone number and contact information from police officers. My brother left it all open in case anyone from our family wanted to contact him. I still can't work up the nerve to call him. The address I have for him is across the fucking country, but he's alive. My brother is alive. I'm drunk as fuck right now because I can't deal with any of this. I haven't talked to my parents in weeks and I never plan on speaking to them again. Not for what they've done to me or my brother. This is real and it happened. It is happening right now. I don't know how to process this at all. My parents let me believe my brother was dead or kidnapped forever. When in reality, he just ran away and when he wanted to come back, they disowned him. And we still do have two more updates on this, but imagine finding out that after all those years, the betrayal from your parents, what were they thinking? Why didn't they want you to know? And I know that we can see already that they're homophobic people, but to just let your other son think that, you know, his brother's gone missing and they don't know what's happened to him for all these years, that's messed up. And clearly this has had a big mental effect on OP before that second update came out. You know, they've been thinking about their brother, what happened to them, although they had an inkling, but they was never sure what happened. But now we're going to move on to that third update to see what happens next, which happened around a month later. Here's an update for you all. The day after I made my last post, I woke up and got called into work. I told my wife, who was essentially my confidant, and I told her everything, the whole story. She wasn't really surprised. She's not a fan of my parents much, but like many of you, She's told me to call the number I was given for my brother immediately. She insisted on it. She took herself and my son out for the day together so I could be alone to talk with him. I dialed the number about seven times before I actually pressed the call button. It started ringing and I hung up. Then I got frustrated at myself and called the number back. It rang and rang and I got a voicemail, but it was the automated voice, not anyone else's. I didn't leave a voicemail. I thought the whole thing was ridiculous. I called my wife and told her to come home and she refused until I had talked to someone on the other end of the phone. About an hour of pacing and drinking two glasses of scotch at one o'clock in the afternoon, I called the number again. It rang three times. I panicked. I hung up. But this time, the number was calling me back. I swear to whatever gods above, I thought my heart was going to stop. I almost threw up right there. I answered the call. The first thing I heard on the other end of the line was a guy laughing in the background. There was wind on the phone. The person on the other end was outside and it was windy. Who is this? It was his voice. I knew that voice. It was my fucking brother, my brother, who had been gone for my entire life. I covered my mouth with my shaking hands and just sat there. He kept asking me who it was. The guy in the background was trying to talk over him. He hung up on me. I called him back right away. He answered again. Me being a creepy ass, the first thing I said after decades of not seeing him and thinking he was dead, I blurted, I got your number. He asked me who I was and what I wanted. I said, it's me. There was a really long pause. I thought the call had dropped. Then I heard him tell someone to turn the radio down and roll the window up. 
the sound of wind stopped and then he asked me my name. I told him and he said that I was lying. I told him I got his number from the missing children's network and detectives. I heard him gasp. He asked me what color shoelaces he wore to a picnic when we were kids and I remember my mum getting mad at his orange laces with blue shoes. It was the last time we were together as a family. I could tell he was crying. The first thing he asked me was, where are you? And I told him I lived a few hours away from home. Without hesitating, he told me, I'm coming. He went straight to the airport without any luggage, bought a plane ticket and flew straight to me. We stayed on the phone with each other the whole time. When he was walking through the gate, I knew who he was right away. He is middle-aged, salt and pepper hair, muscular. He looks just like our dad, only better. I know if I told him that, that would make him mad. I literally pushed an old lady out of the way and just hugged him. He's about two inches taller than me. He was able to pick me up. He was crying, I was crying. I was having a breakdown. We went to the bar at the airport. He wouldn't let me out of his sight. He kept holding onto my arm, kept telling me how unreal it all was. He apologized to me. He kept crying, telling me he felt horrible. I told him to forget everything and tell me about his life. He's married, his husband is a doctor, a pediatric oncologist. They live in the Pacific Northwest. They have two children, girls 12 and eight. He works as a legal consultant and has his own firm. He has an amazing life. He told me that he thought I hated him and wanted nothing to do with him. We sat at the bar for hours, literal hours. I think we sat for about six hours before I begged him to come home and meet my wife. We got home and my wife was a mess. She hugged him and insisted he stay with us. At this point, his husband was going insane and kept calling him. He had no idea what was going on. He thought he had eloped or something. It was crazy for a couple of days until everything was explained and out in the open. My son and my brother were like two peas in a pod. Honestly, I never wanted children. My son was an amazing accident, but I'm not good with kids. I'm always afraid I'm going to break them, but my brother is a pro. Kids love him. He stayed with us for two weeks, and in two weeks, everything about my life has changed. His husband and two daughters flew in to stay with us. My brother-in-law and my two nieces, my family. They were my family. They are my family. My brother wants my wife and I to move to be closer to him. My wife is on board. I work as a professor at a university and I've already started to send out feelers to see if there are any open positions. And I found one that is actually tenured and higher pay. I do not plan on forgiving my parents, but my brother still loves them. He went by their house and knocked on the door. My father shut the door in his face. My mother gave him a hug and told him to take care of himself. Then she shut him out. I can't forgive them for that. I have no reason to stay close to them. I want to be with my family. I want to make up for all the lost time. It's 2 a.m. right now, and I'm drinking a tall glass of scotch and grading papers. My beautiful, wonderful, smart, amazing wife is asleep on the couch. She likes to watch me grade papers. My son is asleep in his room, cuddled up with all the stuffed animals his uncle brought him. And I'm here, so happy, so fulfilled, knowing that my family has grown and doubled in size so suddenly. My heart is happy. I am so happy right now, Reddit. I am so happy. And we have one more update to follow. And I found the ending to that update incredibly sad that, you know, the brother went to the parents' house in the end, you know, hoping that they may have changed as he still has love for them to just have the door shut in your face. Wow. But anyway, let's move on to this final update to see what happens next. And this final update is around six months later. Hi everyone, a few months ago I posted a notice that I met my brother that my parents had disowned and didn't tell me, letting me assume that he went missing. Here is that update. I met my brother that was missing. Now here I'm posting an update over six months later. Thank you all for everything so far. Everything in my life has changed in the last 10 months. Honestly, I don't even know what to say. I want to apologize for neglecting this account. I've been busy. I want to fill you in on all what's been going on in my life. I owe everyone who has messaged and commented that much at the very least. My wife, son, and myself have moved. Not exactly the same region of the country as my brother and his family, but much closer to him. I got a new job teaching at a new university months ago. While it's not a tenured position, it gives me the option to do research, which is my favorite thing to do. My brother-in-law's family has had many interesting discussions with each other, trying to describe what has happened between my brother and I. They're a pretty open-minded and accepting family. So to hear what we've been through was absolutely shocking to them. 
My brother never told his husband the truth about his life, only that he didn't speak to his family anymore. Nevertheless, they welcomed me and my family with open arms when we came to visit. It was like we had always been part of their family. I feel content knowing that they are my family. When my brother ran away with his first boyfriend, he was verging on 18. He has elaborated and told me that the relationship with the man was abusive and when he tried to leave and return home, our parents would not let him. So he was forced to stay with an abusive man because he had nowhere else to go until he moved away to college. This deepened my anger for my parents, but my brother, still to this day, has this ridiculous sense of hope and optimism. I love that about him because I don't have that. My brother and I are two very different people, but in a way that works well. We reflected on my teenage years and I filled him in on what happened with my life. My brother is very quiet and observant. He always watches before he intervenes. He's soft-spoken and gently objects when someone says something he disagrees with. He's patient, kind, and optimistic, as I've said. He has a very loving heart, so I think that's why he has an unrelenting faith in our parents. Me, on the other hand, I'm abrasive, impatient, and quick to jump to conclusions. My wife wanted me to add about me. Doesn't separate laundry, refuses to mop the floors, and can't properly change the oil. (laughs) Despite being very different, we have this uncanny ability to be thinking the same thing. Even though we have been separated for several years, we can still give each other a look and know exactly what the other is plotting. My brother has been able to create a spectacular life for himself all on his own. One thing I struggle with is knowing that he went through more than half of his life by himself, putting himself through college and law school all alone. The more he filled me in about the years away from my parents, the more angry I became. I severed communication with my parents months ago, after the last time I posted on here and it has done wonders for my own mental health. But then the election happened a few weeks ago. In all honesty, I don't even have the words to summarize what the presidential election was. I don't want to make this political, but the whole thing by its nature is political and serves a great purpose. I've read messages on here of people saying that they too have been disowned by family for being gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or other identifying. I have so many stories from Redditors across the country telling me that they are scared, alone, and afraid every single day of their lives, all because who they fundamentally are. The day after the election, my brother and his husband were devastated. My wife, who is a black woman, was devastated. It's not just Donald Trump himself, it's his supporters, followers, and the ideology that took hold with so many people. Where I come from, Donald Trump's hateful rhetoric on registered Muslims and disenfranchising LGBTQ plus and minoritized people was heralded as something genius and revolutionary. But to me, it was a personal attack on my family. I've been in shock and disgusted for days. I had to explain to my son what it all means and why the world is not always a good place. I had to have the same conversation with him when his grandparents did not like him because of his dark skin. The day after the election, however, I got a call from my mother. I didn't answer it because I was in class, but she left a voicemail and said she would like to talk at my earliest convenience. I thought on it, still enraged, and decided to call her back, more out of curiosity than a desire to speak with her. We began our conversation. She asked how I was doing. My answers were short, one-worded. She jumped right in and I could tell she was uncomfortable. She apologized, but she apologized only to me. I wasn't phased by this. I told my mother that she should talk to my brother and unless she did that, then she need not call me anymore. I told my brother that our mother had called and apologized and the look on his face was pure happiness. I can't even begin to describe it to you all. It was as if all of his dreams had come true. My brother called our mother and she, to my surprise, picked up. They had a short conversation and my brother's happy glow had dimmed somewhat when he got off the phone. He told me that she said that, given the election results, she had only wanted to speak to me. I guess, alluding to the fact that I am white, straight male. The, air quotes, normal son. In an effort to repair the family. And that we all, me, my mum and dad, not my brother, need each other now. She also went on to say that she does not approve of what my brother does. But she had read up on his lifestyle and recommended conversion therapy. My brother ended the call with a very gentle, I'm sorry, mum, but I can't do that. I love you. Good night. I think my brother has been broken these last few weeks and the hope and optimism that naturally carries him through life has been eradicated. He's buried himself in work and ignores any discussion around our family. 
My wife is a counselor and she normally avoids counseling people she doesn't work with, but she's told me that the only thing I can do for my brother at this point is to be there for him and to never let him be alone again. Like I said before though, I have a tendency to lash out and be aggressive. Yesterday, while stewing on my own rage about my parents, I called my mother and when she answered, I just began screaming into the phone. I unleashed a lot of things and I remember crying while I did so because I was so enraged. I told her how much she hurt my brother, her son, and how she put his life in danger all for her ideology. I told her how unfair and upsetting it is that her and my dad would do this to their children, to my brother, how it's criminal and how they should be punished. When I finished screaming, I was going to hang up because she miraculously hadn't during my 10 minutes I raid, but she cut in with a quiet, he sounds grown. My mother acknowledged my brother's existence with that short sentence. Then she went with, I'm so sorry, let me speak to him, okay? But I didn't, I hung up, then I blocked her number. I don't know what she wanted to say, but I'm afraid it is something that could damage my brother further. We are currently staying with him for the Thanksgiving holiday. My view right now is this. My wife and my brother-in-law are sitting on the living room floor, trying to assemble an Ikea shelf. My son is beside me watching cartoons and keeps telling his mother and uncle to shh, and my brother is in the kitchen washing dishes. This is a life that people wanted to see destroyed, taken away and converted. This is a life I'm so grateful to have and it is filled with people that this world is lucky to have on its surface. I haven't told my brother that our mum tried to call and I don't want to. I don't think there's a point. I just want to spend as much time and energy as I can trying to love my brother, my family, my small little slice of bliss. This is my heaven. This is my life I will proudly defend against hate and intolerance and bigotry. I'm so lucky to have this life these people and this happiness and I will never stop fighting for it. And now I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys make of this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today. Getting involved in the channel, your love, time and support means the absolute world to me. It truly, truly does. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wake up, get up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today.